you wouldn't believe how generous folks have been. Let's take a look at this trailer right here. If you look inside, there's lots of items here that are all being sent to those who need it most. We have things that were donated from toothpaste. The busiest mailing day of the year sees the Postal Service processing more than 800 million pieces of mail, which is 40% more than what they process in a typical day. It's a new trend being seen not only here, but across the state as well as cash trap school districts look at new ways to bring in more money. College Station IC officials believe ads just like this one will bring in around $44,000 in the first school year alone. Attendees hope a good word to up there will bring some real rain down here. In fact, they're so faithful it will rain, everyone was asked to bring an umbrella. David Watkins will no longer be the city manager of Bryan. This after the city council voted 6-0 tonight to take action towards a term of separation. Indeed, John Billy Kennedy cut to the chase this afternoon and said he's already got his eye on the prize, that is, to win national championships. It's hard to breathe in a house that's 101. It's hard. And I know it's hard on my kids. Monica Wallace O'Brien says it's been a living hell for her and her five kids at their rental home on Biddle Lane. That my kids have to suffer and that they're always complaining about it, that it's hot. That's what, you know, it hurts me to know that I'm paying my rent and I'm without air. She says her AC completely stopped working June 29th and technicians say it will be $4,000 for a new condenser. Her gas has also been off since June 21st for safety reasons because of problems with the hot water heater. That means no hot water, no working stove or oven. During the mid-afternoon, it's already pretty hot inside the Wallace living room. In fact, while their AC is broken, our thermometer tells us it's around 93 degrees right now. In fact, it's so hot they've actually been going outside and spent numerous nights sleeping in their truck with the AC running to keep cool. We approached the landlord to find out why repairs hadn't been made, but were told he was unavailable to meet with us when we went to his office. Soon after, though, he called us back. We were in the living room. It was like 93, 94 degrees, which can be pretty pretty oppressively hot. Hey, for... you know what? I'm so concerned about it. Why don't you pay the rent? And I'll fix all that. It becomes a case of he said, she said at this point, with the landlord saying she's been behind on her rent numerous times and says he sent her an eviction notice weeks ago. Wallace tells us she's received no eviction notice and claims she was late once. My AC unit was going out on me, and he acted like he didn't want to fix it, so I withheld rent. While the AC issue doesn't violate city code, no hot water and gas does. From what I understand, they're going to give the property owner three days to come into a compliance, and of course, if it's not in compliance by then, then, then we can issue them citations for, for violating the code. It's just awful. It's awful when... Nobody really don't want to help you. The landlord tells us he plans on fixing the problem once Monica Wallace and her family move out. In Bryan, Clay Falls, well, what about News 3. When he's not standing? And Clay, they are in for a long night. That's right, Meredith. The Aggie faithful are out tonight in force for a shot at tickets, which are limited. There are 1,250 reserve seats available for students at a cost of $125 and 2,000 standing room only spirit passes available for $50 each. Now, despite the cold evening, many folks here are actually camping out in style. An outdoor adventure of Aggie-tastic proportions kicked off Tuesday night at Kyle Field. Well, as of right now, we're on the 10th line, and then we're like number 60. So, and we have, I mean, total pooling with us is like eight people, but only about five or six of us are actually going to participate in camping out. Lauren Slayton is a junior at A&M and started pitching her group's makeshift tent before sundown. We uh, bought some tarps, and uh, we're going to place them around each side of our little homemade tent we have going on just to block the wind because it's pretty cold out here, and uh, we have a little portable heater um, and some blankets. Others are passing the time playing video games during their time camping on the concrete. Keep simulating the Cotton Bowl game actually, playing a and LSU in the Cotton Bowl Stadium right now. So, pretty fun to kill the time. Um, great way. Junior Matt Zamora, as well as everyone we spoke with, thinks they have a good shot at walking away with tickets to the big game in Arlington. Oh, very optimistic, yeah. We got here pretty early. There were some people in line already. Uh, we're probably about number six on the list right now. So, pretty confident. Um, probably, we're going for the 125 tickets. So, yeah, I'm really excited. And for you Aggie parents watching at home, don't worry. It 
it wasn't all fun and games at the camp out. Al Agner and his roommate were learning by lantern light. Well, I guess we're having fun, yes. Yeah, having fun before it gets too cold out here. I know that much. It's freezing. But yeah, just trying to get the studying done. Figured we'd get as much studying done up here waiting on tickets. Just as we would at the house, so yeah, might as well. And we're just hoping that we get tickets for the Cotton Bowl and Giga Maggie's. And the bowl pull begins Thursday morning at 7. Reporting live at Kyle Field, Clay Falls, News 3. Okay, thanks, Clay. A violent crash is caught on tape on busy Martin Luther King Jr. Street in Bryan. A camera at the King Mart convenience store recorded it all. This pickup truck stopped in the street to allow two passengers to get out. 29-year-old Melvin Workman had just stepped out of the truck when a City of Bryan street sweeper plowed into the back of the pickup. Brandon Hall was waiting to take his cousin Melvin to work when the crash happened right beside him. When Melvin was exiting the vehicle at the point of impact, he was uh, hoisted in front of the truck that he was actually in, and then it hoisted him maybe eight foot uh, to the curb from the middle of the road, or from, from where they were stopped. Leroy Lewis, another bystander, ran over to see what was happening. I heard the impact. Uh, when I, by the time I came out, I seen a, you know, a male who's kind of crawling, you know, up onto the, to the grass area right here. Workman was seriously injured in the crash and taken to St. Joseph Regional Health Center in Bryan. Another passenger and the driver of the street sweeper were also taken to the hospital. Right. Detectives from Bryan PD were called to investigate the wreck. There's no way to determine that right now. Um, I mean, there's a lot of things we have to look into as to who's at fault. Uh, right, all we know right now is that the city vehicle rear-ended the truck in front of it. It's a split-second incident that Bryan police will now have to figure out who made a mistake. In Bryan, Clay Falls, News 3. It's the side of what most of us see with springtime storms, but this is the 1st of February. Eric Tedrick was literally picking up the pieces of his storage business in Wixon Valley. I had uh, four of my metal buildings that uh, moved a considerable distance. I mean, one of them 50 yards maybe, and uh, it pretty much trashed them all. The solid buildings were no match after wind gusts peaked over 60 and 70 miles an hour in parts of the Brazos Valley. They were they're decent buildings. I mean, of course, it's not going to handle when you roll it over a couple times, but. You know, it's, it's a well-built building, especially the one that's over here in the field. The Arctic Air Mass packed a punch in Bryan, destroying stockade fences in Austin's Colony, knocking off siding at the Allen Academy Preschool Building, and a tree was uprooted at the newly opened Momentum Plaza Building. Let's hope this was the worst. South of College Station on Falling Leaf Court, Sam Boggan was dealing with a falling tree. It's still kind of lucky because, like you said, if it had blown the other way or if it had been one of the other trees, it would have been right on the house. And in Bryan, Amanda Provazic had a twisted oak in her front yard on Twisted Oaks Drive. Last year, she lost another oak tree after it was struck by lightning. We lost this big oak tree, which narrowly missed our windows by inches, per se. Um, we, you know, we definitely woke us up at 4.01 this morning. <laughs> Back at BCS Portable Buildings, Eric Tedrick says the storm won't set him back any money, but it will for the company that supplies the buildings. We're pretty fortunate that we didn't, none of our other buildings got hit when these were flying around too. So, With Groundhog Day approaching, many of us are left wondering how long this winter blast will last. In Brazos County, Clay Falls. News 3. And at this point, we don't know any connection between the suspect and the victim. Uh, none that we know of. Uh, none that was indicated by uh, the, sus the adult with the uh, victim or, you know, anyone else. Okay. Thank you very much. Now, we have a few pictures of the suspect, and I'd also like to read you a description of the suspect. He's described as a white male, 5 foot 7 to 5 foot 9 in his early to mid-20s. He has a medium to heavy build, and he was wearing light-colored denim jeans with a dark-colored hoodie jacket. He also had a baseball cap on with the letter P on it, and he had white tennis shoes with dark colored markings. Now, at this time, we do not know the condition of the 12-year-old. She was stabbed one time, though, and was taken to the College Station Medical Center. We'll keep you updated throughout the newscast as we get more details on this case. Reporting live in College Station, Clay Falls, News 3.